Awards. So last year, we had um, a partnership with USAID to work on um, TB active case finding. So we had this project with uh, Fujifilm Ultra Portable X-ray and Mobio's TrueNAT machine. So both of these um, technologies are called the Introducing New Tools Project from USAID. And so last year from September to October, we were able to screen 1,774 TB presumptive patients because we were able to bring this technology right to their doorstep. So how it works if for the people that are not aware of this, um, the Fujifilm Ultra Portable X-Ray is an X-Ray machine that looks like a camera and you can bring it anywhere and it doesn't need electricity. It can be charged and used um, with a battery pack. Same with the Mobios TrueNAT uh, machine. It's a very uh, small machine and you can use it to test the sputum of the patient with or without electricity. So we were able to go to the farthest flung areas here in Bantayan. Um, so most of these people can't afford to travel to the mainland for treatment or for diagnostics. That's why we had this um, project and we brought the tools and diagnosis to them. And we saw there was a very, very high increase in case detection and also um, case success treatment. So by bringing these technologies to the people, people were more open to getting tested and getting checked for tuberculosis. So here, so, um, Bobby, you can see how the machine is lugged around in a suitcase. It's like a plastic that's the ultra portable x-ray. It's in like a plastic uh, container slash suitcase with wheels. So you can like take it anywhere with you. And the TrueNAT is also in a similar setup um, for transportation. And as you can see here, it's out in an open field area. So the machines can be fit in a giant plastic container or a plastic tub. The same tubs that you can use to put um, things in when you store them. We had um, these giant tubs and then we brought them in our boats. So in the Philippines, we use what's called a pump boat. So it's kind of like a smaller catamaran that we use to travel um, from islet to islet. Yeah, so here's a, an example of us on the boat. Um, this is from our Facebook page. So a little bit of shout out to my staff um, from Bantayan Rural Health Unit. You can add us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bantayan Health. So um, the on the left is a picture of my staff and I commuting from the islet to another, from our island to another islet. So as you can see here, the weather conditions are pretty bad. It was actually raining and the waves were big. So we were wearing um, rain jackets and it was a bit cold. Believe it or not, it can get cold in the Philippines, if, especially if you're wet in the rain on a boat. And then, so on the right, this was one of our last um, mission trips out in the field. And this was during one of the typhoons, Typhoon Paeng. We actually didn't know there was a storm signal raised until we were maybe around 4 p.m. because the place where we were at, Barangay Patao, did not have any signal. So we didn't know that there was a storm signal number one and that everyone was pulled out and excused from work. Yeah, we were still working um, into the afternoon. So we couldn't stop rain or shine because the patients were there and actively waiting for us. So this is one of the challenges that we saw was the weather conditions. But you know what? It took a lot of teamwork and effort with my staff and with the barangay healthcare workers and the officials. Yeah. New Tools Project helped us detect TB. So we did this in September and October 2022. So as you can see in 2021, we only had 110 TB cases. That was because um, it was still the pandemic here and people were afraid to go to the doctor or the hospital. And we were still a bit cautious about doing barangay missions because of the rampant increase in COVID cases in Cebu province. So back in 2022, we had a higher case detection rate because of the true NAT and the ultra portable X-ray. And now in June to um, or January to June 2023, we have 202 cases. But now in August, we have 254, 254 TB cases now. So this next slide shows how the ultra portable X-ray 
and the TrueNet machine was very helpful in aiding us in the diagnosis of TB cases. So in 2022, we had 2,506 TB cases and 1,774 of those were just from September to October 2022 using the TrueNet and the ultra portable chest x-ray. As you can see, bringing new tools to the barangays, to the people, can increase case detection by over 1,000%. This, I'm telling you, these tools are very, very crucial in eradicating tuberculosis. And for me, um, especially those of our um, GIDA or geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, these tools can really help um, eradicate TB one barangay at a time. So if the chest x-ray was positive, then they had to do the true nut for the sputum, and then they would be referred to us, the doctors, for medical treatment, on-the-spot medical treatment, as well as PICT or provider-initiated counseling for um, HIV. That was just in one day. So we started at 8 a.m. and we ended at 4 or 5 p.m. As you can see, that's more than a diagnostic center will ever test and treat in one day. So this was the first day that we did it. And this was out in an open field and the barangay officials just put uh, tents. And as you can see, there's a shower curtain that we're using <laughs> as a makeshift um, screen over there. So I wanted to show that the numbers will tell a better story than pictures ever will. And then on the right, um, we left at 3 in the morning to go to this islet. Yeah, <laughs> 3 in the morning because we have to go to the islet when it's high tide. So we have to go with the tide. If it's low tide, we can't cross the sea because then our boat will get stuck on the... It will get um, scratched and stuck on the bottom and we can't travel. So we had to go at 3 in the morning for active case finding. This was the most amount of patients that I checked in one day. I checked, I think it was, I was the only doctor and I checked 238 patients from 6 a.m. until 3 or 4 p.m. And this is the one where we left at 3 in the morning. We did it right outside their daycare and inside their um, gym. And again, when we arrived, um, actually before we arrived, there was a thunderstorm and we were soaking wet when we got to this barangay. <laughs> We were soaking wet and we didn't bring any extra clothes. So the barangay officials and our healthcare workers on the island actually gave us um, free t-shirts to wear because we were just drenched in um, rain. If we get the new tools project back here, we're willing to share um, the case finding with the other two municipalities, just like what we did last year. My message is to fully support technology and new tools for case detection and for active management of tuberculosis because you have willing healthcare workers such as me and my team on the field who are willing to promote these tools um, for the eradication of TB because I unfortunately I don't want to see another person die of TB. Just yesterday or two days ago we had a patient living with HIV who also had tuberculosis pass away at the age of 24. And I don't want this happening anymore because I want the people here to be resilient and to be successful in whatever that they do. But unfortunately, with these diseases of poverty, um, a lot of people don't seek help because of the stigma and because um, the diagnostic tools are such a far-flung reach for them. So I hope that by bringing point-of-care testing to their doorstep, we can help eradicate tuberculosis one country at a time or one barangay at a time. So that's my message for them. So welcome to another episode of NTB Dialogues, 9490 Global Voices series. Today we have a very special guest from the front lines of uh, fighting TB in Bantayan, Cebu, Philippines. Welcome Dr. Samantha Tinse. Hi, Bobby. Thank you for um, having me here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samantha. Dr. Samantha Tinse, friends, uh, as many of you may be knowing, she's a municipal health officer in the municipality of Bantayan, Cebu, in Philippines. So, uh, Dr. Samantha, 
uh, we have heard such inspiring stories from the front line. See, the real uh, 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 battle uh, to fight TB is on the front lines. That is where we, uh, yeah. you know, prevent TB. That is where we prevent transmission. That is where we diagnose TB, treat TB, care and support. And that is so critical uh, to translate the global goals to end TB yeah. locally, in reality, ground on the ground. So thanks a lot for being a champion. Thanks a lot for being the hero on the ground. Tell us the inspiring stories, the difference which you are bringing in people's lives. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. And um, I just wanted to say, uh, I just recently spoke at the um, annual Philippine Coalition Against Tuberculosis um, Convention in Manila. And so that's how I met um, Sumit from Mobio. Mo and actually, we use one of their products called the True Nut Machine to help eradicate tuberculosis here in our island. So just a little bit of background. My name is Sam. Um, I'm the Municipal Health Officer here in Bantayan. And I grew up in the U.S., but I decided to pursue my medical studies here in Cebu, Philippines. So my undergraduate degree is in public health science at the University of California, Irvine. So public health has always been something of um, a growing uh, field of expertise and concern for me. So that's why I decided to serve back here in my home country of the Philippines. So going back to tuberculosis, as we all know, it's a disease of poverty. And unfortunately, here in our island, a lot of people have tuberculosis because of malnutrition. Malnutrition, not only that, because of poor hygiene. That's why now we're improving our water and sanitation and hygiene department because we want to help eradicate this disease. So last year, we had um, a partnership with USAID to work on um, TB active case finding. So we had this project with uh, Fujifilm Ultra Portable X-ray and MoBio's TrueNAT machine. So both of these... Um, technologies are called the Introducing New Tools Project from USAID. And so last year from September to October, we were able to screen 1,774 TB presumptive patients because we were able to bring this technology right to their doorstep. So how it works if for the people that are not aware of this, um, the Fujifilm Ultra Portable X-ray is an X-ray machine that looks like a camera and you can bring it anywhere and it doesn't need electricity. It can be charged and used um, with a battery pack. Same with the MoBio's TrueNAT uh, machine. It's a very uh, small machine and you can use it to test the sputum of the patient with or without electricity. So we were able to go to the farthest flung areas here in Bantayan. A um, little bit of background, we have 25 barangays. Barangays are little um, townships. And five of those townships or barangays are from our islets, meaning we have additional smaller islands apart from our larger island. So as you know, um, these areas are geographically isolated and diverse. And that's why we wanted to have TB point of care testing brought to their doorsteps. Because as you know, um, this, this disease is a disease of poverty and 85% of our population live below the poverty line. Most of the people here are fisher folks. Most of the people here are farmers and their income is around 300 to 350 pesos a day. That is less than um, 10 US dollars, maybe around six or seven US dollars a day. And that's their income generally. And um, so most of these people can't afford to travel to the mainland for treatment or for diagnostics. That's why we had this um, project and we brought the tools and diagnosis to them. And we saw there was a very, very high increase in case detection and also um, case success treatment. So by bringing these technologies to the people, people were more open to getting tested and getting checked for tuberculosis. So we're hoping that we can get back these technologies um, in the next month. So right now we have an ongoing um, discussion with the Department of Health here in the Philippines because the Fujifilm Ultra Portable X-ray was donated to them by USAID. Um, so unfortunately right now the tripod, which is the generator and the power bank for this X-ray broke. So now we're working with Fujifilm to get the replacement part so we can start active case finding again. And um, Sir Sumit and Mobio, um, 
We also have an ongoing talk for the true NAT machine to be brought back to Bantayan Island so we can start with our active case finding again and bring the point of care treatment back to the people. Because if people are um, not stigmatized for getting tested, then we can help eradicate TB one day at a time. Yes, absolutely. You said it all. Like, you know, we have to eradicate TB one step at a time. I totally support it. This needs to be resumed as soon as possible back. Uh, so we just wanted to know, um, uh, like, how how was it happening? Like, because you said these are islets or uh, barangayas, right? Uh, so if, sorry for my pronunciation. So uh, how, how do you commute? And also I've heard that the weather conditions uh, could be a uh, bit extreme. So can you please give us a peep into the ground realities and challenges despite and in spite of which you have been trying to make a huge difference in life support. Yeah. So actually, when we did this project, I was a bit hesitant because it was in the middle of typhoon season. So we did this in September and October last year. And we're going to continue to do it around the same time. So we're planning on doing it again during our active typhoon season. So last year, we had some weather issues. So um, just a little bit of um, information. So the machines can be fit in a giant plastic container or a plastic tub. The same tubs that you can use to put um, things in when you store them. So we were lugging these around in a boat. So we had some, I don't know if I can show my screen. Let me try to look for the, the photos. <laughs> Wait. We had um, these giant tubs and then we brought them in our boats. So in the Philippines, we use what's called a pump boat. So it's kind of like a smaller catamaran that we use to travel um, from islet to islet. Yeah, so here's an example of us on the boat. Um, this is from our Facebook page. So a little bit of shout out to my staff um, from Bantayan Rural Health Unit. You can add us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bantayan Health. So um, the on the left is a picture of my staff and I commuting from the islet to another from our island to another islet. So as you can see here, the weather conditions were pretty bad. It was actually raining and the waves were big. So we were wearing um, rain jackets and it was a bit cold. Believe it or not, it can get cold in the Philippines, if especially if you're wet in the rain on a boat. And then so on the right, this was one of our last um, mission trips out in the field. And this was during one of the typhoons, Typhoon Paeng. We actually didn't know there was a storm signal raised until we were maybe around 4 p.m. because the place where we were at, Barangay Patao, did not have any signal. So we didn't know that there was a storm signal number one and that everyone was pulled out and excused from work. Yet we were still working um, into the afternoon. So... We couldn't stop rain or shine because the patients were there and actively waiting for us. So this is one of the challenges that we saw was the weather conditions. But you know what? It took a lot of teamwork and effort with my staff and with the barangay healthcare workers and the officials. Because without them, we couldn't have done this. So there was a counterpart from the local government units that we were involved with and also with um, their workers and their barangay. Um, staff. So this was an all-in-one effort supported by the community. And I'm just proud of um, being an adopted Bantayanan and living here because of this um, sense of community with the people around. So as you can see, also, there's a photo of the ultra portable x-ray. It looks just like a camera here on the right side. So let me see if I can pull up. Um, yeah, so this that's me uh, wet in the rain there. So some, those are a few photos. And I just wanted to um, explain also the case detection here. So Bantayan Island is in the northernmost part of Cebu. And it has very beautiful islets and beaches. So if you want to visit Cebu, Philippines one day, it's a very beautiful place. Okay. So these are health resources in Bantayan. So this is part of the research paper I... Um, presented last year. So we wrote this paper with a Fulbright scholar. It discusses point of care testing in the island. So we have 25 barangays and one district hospital that unfortunately is understaffed and undersupplied. And we also have a sea ambulance and a private birthing home and a functional airport, but commercial flights have yet to get started. 
So as you can see here, we can be accessed by land and sea. So the most um, common transportation here is a ferry boat, or sometimes you use the sea ambulance also to transport patients from the islets back to our mainland island. And we are about 40 minutes away from Mactan Cebu International Airport by air or by helicopter. So for TB case detection, I just wanted to show how the new tools project helped us detect TB. So we did this in September and October 2022. So as you can see in 2021, we only had 110 TB cases. That was because um, it was still the pandemic here and people were afraid to go to the doctor or the hospital. And we were still a bit cautious about doing barangay missions because of the rampant increase in COVID cases in Cebu province. So back in 2022, we had a higher case detection rate because of the true NAT and the ultra portable X-ray. And now in June to, um, or January to June 2023, we have 202 cases. But now in August, we have 254, 254 TB cases now. So this next slide shows how the ultra portable X-ray and the TrueNAT machine was very helpful in aiding us in the diagnosis of TB cases. So in 2022, we had 2,506 TB cases and 1,774 of those were just from September to October 2022 using the TrueNAT and the ultra portable chest x-ray. As you can see, bringing new tools to the barangays, to the people, can increase case detection by over 1,000%. This, I'm telling you, these tools are very, very crucial in eradicating tuberculosis. And for me, um, especially those of our um, GIDA or geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, these tools can really help um, eradicate TB one barangay at a time. So for this year, we have um, 700 and, or no, I think it's 1,003 um, TB presumptive cases. So TB presumptive means that they had uh, symptoms of tuberculosis or an upper respiratory tract infection. So for case notification, again, the numbers don't lie. These tools really, really, really help us with detecting tuberculosis and eventually eradicate it here in the Philippines. Because unfortunately, um, TB is still very rampant in this country. Um, growing up in the US, I didn't really see cases of tuberculosis. It's kind of considered an ancient disease in developed countries such as the US and Europe. But here in Asia, it's still something that we struggle with. And with any um, case finding mission, I am very excited to um, participate and include my workers. So for TB success rate, it also helps that we have these tools because as you can see, we have high success rates as well in our setting. So that's just some of the data. I wanted to show that the numbers don't lie. Okay, so this data was also presented in the conference um, we had two weeks ago. You have any questions? Sorry, I'm going so fast. I'm just so excited to share all this information. Yeah. Not at all. We are, I, I'm so much in awe of the kind of work which you have, which you are doing. Really, Dr. Samantha, just absolutely amazing. So much in awe. And so such an important uh, work. And also, as you rightly said, data uh, is data is so important and this brings out the importance of using uh, you know important or uh, who recommended point of care decentralized tools like for like trunat mm -hmm. um, um, and of course coupled with the uh, like for example the x-ray um, which has led up to such a such a dramatic rise in notification so so before before the 2022 active case finding with the 
the portable X-ray and uh, molecular test through that. How was the TB screening happening? Was it like a sputum uh, smear microscopy or you were transporting samples? Can you just give us a peep? Um, we're yeah. still doing the active case finding, but we're using different uh, sets of tools now. So uh, just a brief background. So I started working in Bantayan in November 2021. So prior to that, um, the method of screening was still very, um, how do I say this, inefficient and also expensive for the patient. So the doctors, um, we had a gene expert machine already. However, the x-ray was still a bit of a challenge for patients because they did not want to pay the 350 or 450 peso x-ray because that's already more than the salary that they earn in a day. So, um, so what happened was in 2022, before the TrueNAT or the or the um, up ultra portable x-ray came, we started a partnership with the PBSB. So that's um, the Philippine, uh, I think business council here in the Philippines. And they were providing free um, chest x-ray vouchers for the people to get chest x-rays, which is very helpful because now they can go to the diagnostic labs in our island and get the x-ray for free. But the hurdle that we found with this was that the people did not want to pay the boat fare or the tricycle or rickshaw fare to go to the labs because, again, that's cutting out from their daily budget. So that's how we're doing it now, even though... Um, now we have additional partners who are willing to do mobile x-rays with trucks that have x-ray machines in them. But the challenge of that is you cannot bring the truck to the islets. So that's our challenge. Um, these uh, We have partners right now, Christian organizations that are bringing these mobile chest x-rays to the island, to the mainland island, which is good. But again, it's not as good as the case detection that we saw with the ultra portable and the true nat because that one is real point of care testing and that we can do right at their doorsteps and we can schedule it anywhere anytime so for me it's still a bigger um bigger rise in case detection with the new tools project so inspiring for me to hear the difference which which has come uh, you know on the ground so uh, so dr samantha uh, so um, so these uh, uh, both of the the x ray and the molecular test to nat they were fitted in a tub right and taken in the the boat yes um so they were put in these tubs and then they were put on the um on the boats let me try to see if i can uh, so let's just do a brief overview how we did this so that um people can understand the setup first so we involved the barangay healthcare workers, and they're the ones who took the attendance and the vital signs. And then our own um, community nurses did the interview and the patient medical history, as well as the registration. And then the rad tech was the one who took um, the chest x-ray. If the chest x-ray was positive, then they had to do the true nut for the sputum. And then they would be referred to us, the doctors, for medical treatment, on-the-spot medical treatment, as well as PICT or provider-initiated counseling for um, HIV. We also did HIV testing on the spot on the same day because, as we know, a lot of persons living with HIV are also tuberculosis positive. So we just wanted to end the stigma and um, end the frustration of patients dealing with these tests by offering it on the spot. So this is the ultra-portable x-ray. It uses uh, artificial intelligence or AI to read um, tuberculosis. So your, your chest x-ray will turn out with a red spot if it has TB. And it's much easier to tell the patients that um, you have tuberculosis and show them this picture with a red spot on it than a traditional x-ray. And we also allowed patients to take photos of their x-rays if they had a smartphone so that they can also show their family members what happened that day. Yeah, so I found this tool to be more effective in explaining to patients how tuberculosis in their lungs look like versus a traditional x-ray, which is just black and white, and they, and they don't really understand it. So that was our intro. So here's an example of a TB patient. As you can see, it um, turns up red. And on the right, um, that's the first barangay that we did the um, 
TV screening with that's Barangay Bantigi and the, actually the Barangay captain who's the Barangay official was very very excited. He's the guy on the on the screen you see on the right. He's very happy and excited to have this. We did this in a place called Sayao. Sayao has one of the highest case rates of tuberculosis in his barangay. It's probably because the houses are shanties and they're all right next to each other. So as you can see here, we also feature the medical technologist with the true nap machine. And she wasn't using electricity to run the machine at all. She was just using the battery pack that came with it. So as you can see, it's highly effective and the community is always excited to have free medical services available to them. So here we go. This is the first one. You can see a clearer picture of the true knot on the right side of the screen and our partners with USAID, the Rad Tech and the Medical Technologist. Okay. So as you can see here, there was 117 patients tested and seven of those had TB with a case uh, detection of 6%. So we, we're one of the few um, demonstration sites in the Philippines that actually took data because as you know, my background is in epidemiology and I love crunching numbers. So I wanted to show that the numbers will tell a better story than pictures ever will. Can you just let us know like 117 were tested on the same day? or, or Yes, this was just in that um, Barangay Bantigi, Sayao as the small um smaller subset of that that was just in one day so we started at 8 a.m and we ended at 4 or 5 p.m as you can see that's more than a diagnostic center will ever test and treat in one day so this was the first day that we did it and this was out in an open field and the barangay officials just put uh tents and as you can see there's a shower curtain that we're using <laughs> as a makeshift um, screen over there. So here, um, Bobby, you can see how the machine is lugged around in a suitcase. It's like a plastic, that's the ultra portable x-ray. It's in like a plastic uh, container slash suitcase with wheels. So you can like take it anywhere with you. And the TrueNet is also in a similar setup um, for transportation. And as you can see here, it's out in an open field area. So people had questions about the radiation of the ultra portable it actually has less radiation than a traditional x-ray. And the true net is also unique as it can um, check the sputum on the spot. So patients don't have to line up for the gene expert test. We can check it on the spot as well. So on the right, this is one of the case findings we did in the district hospital. We wanted to help check their staff and also some barangay health work care workers see here's a larger photo it's just like a tripod you can set it up like a photo booth anywhere <laughs> for the ultra portable unfortunately um the department of health here in the philippines said that we couldn't use the ultra portable just yet because the tripod which is also the power bank in the generator um something malfunctioned so fujifilm thank you daisuke uh from fujifilm they will be sending a replacement soon so we can use it yeah, so this one is in Barangay Silyon, and only 4.2% tested positive or two patients. So that's pretty good. So as you can see, there are houses because this was in the Silyon NHA housing community. Okay. And then this one is at the district hospital. As you can see on the bottom left, that's the true nap machine. It's just a standalone, doesn't need electricity. It's just all in one there with our medical technologist. So this one, only one tested positive out of 75 because these were already um, known healthcare workers and they're very good about taking care of their health. So one tested positive, that one had uncontrolled diabetes. As you can see on the left, this is, um, I think the barangay with the second highest case detection rate of almost 9%. 156 patients got checked on that day and 14 of them were positive for tuberculosis. And then on the right, um, we left at three in the morning to go to this islet. Yeah. 
we're in the morning because we have to go to the islet when it's high tide. So we have to go with the tide. If it's low tide, we can't cross the sea because then our boat will get stuck on the, it will get um scratched and stuck on the bottom and we can't travel. So we had to go at three in the morning for active case finding. This was the most amount of patients that I checked in one day. I checked, I think it was, I was the only doctor and I checked 238 patients from 6 a.m um until 3 or 4 p.m yeah <laughs> it was pretty crazy but i couldn't have done it without our team we also provided free blood sugar testing um as you can see in the photo there they're doing the sugar test and also some pediatric checkups as well very supportive barangay officials here as well providing so much food and snacks for us so that we couldn't go hungry <laughs> yeah so this was the one I discussed earlier. We checked 156 patients. So as you can see, it's just like um, a traditional x-ray, but more portable. Yeah, 9% here, 14 out of 156. And then Kabak is also one of the largest barangays. I think they had one of the highest case findings as well, where 16 out of 111 were positive. And then this one, as you see the beautiful ocean, this is one of our islets called Barangay Hilotongan. Um, this islet is actually um, very near our mainland. However, it's difficult to travel here sometimes due to the low tide. So again, our workers had to go out, I think around six in the morning to go to this islet. And they did it inside the daycare and outside the church facilities in that islet. So as you can see here, we're testing on average um, 70 to 120 patients a day using the ultra portable and the true nut. And as you can see in every barangay that we went, there was always at least one positive case. There was no barangay that we went where we had zero case detection. And um, unfortunately, that is a bit alarming, right? For especially for healthcare professionals here. And this is the one where we left at three in the morning. We did it right outside their daycare and inside their um, gym. And again, when we arrived, um, actually before we arrived, there was a thunderstorm and we were soaking wet when we got to this barangay. <laughs> we were soaking wet and we didn't bring any extra clothes. So the barangay officials and our healthcare workers on the island actually gave us um, free t-shirts to wear because we were just drenched in um, rain. So everyone was very supportive and I'm just so happy to be an adopted healthcare worker here and a bantayan. <laughs> yeah, so again, as you can see, almost 200 patients were tested and 14 of those were tuberculosis patients. Dr. Samantha, I am so much in awe to uh, to see see the kind of difference you're making on the ground despite such mountainous challenges. Just amazing. I really wish that, uh, you know, may your tribe grow. One day in all the islets, we will have zero cases because of people uh, and heroes like you. So very, very impressed, Dr. Samantha. Thanks a lot for sharing this. Just a few um, things. Um, like one of them is um, what were, what was the response of other health officials when you made this huge difference or other officials like authorities and governments? Uh, Actually, um, with this case detection, I feel like I inspired a lot of medical students to get more into um, working as a government physician. We also had medical interns here from the Ateneo School of Medicine recently. And we took them around doing case finding for um, different types of diseases. And they found that it was something that they weren't aware of before because this type of medicine is not really taught extensively in medical school. It's something they teach for maybe a week or two weeks, but then they kind of don't go into the details of it. So no one really knows what a government physician does. They don't realize what a public health physician does. So when we talk in schools and we expose the younger generation, especially high school and college kids to this, they're a bit more amazed at the level of field work that we do. <laughs> and a lot of them are actually very interested in this type of um, 
in this type of field, not only as a doctor, but also as um, a nurse, as a pharmacist, we also have a public health pharmacist and a public health dentist who also goes out in the field and does free oral checkups to children. So it's not just limited to doctors, um, it's also other healthcare professionals. So I think in this case, I, I hope that we're transforming the next generation to get more into this because unfortunately, we are understaffed. Not a lot of people want to work in government. They want to either go abroad to America, where I grew up, or they want to go to Australia or to the UK or to do other fields such as business because um, unfortunately, there's a stigma now of um, healthcare workers, especially during the COVID pandemic. A lot of healthcare workers died young and old. So some people actually dropped out of medical school or dropped out of nursing school because of this. So I'm just hoping with all the talks that I do, with all the lectures that I do, that I can help inspire other people to not be afraid and to go and test the limit of what they can do as healthcare workers. Because unfortunately, we can't do this as an island. We can't do this alone. We have to work as a team. So. In our island in Bantayan, we are three different uh, townships or municipalities. So it's um, Bantayan, the largest one where I work, Santa Fe, the tourist one where all the nice beaches are, and Madridejos, where all the good food such as scallops and uh, crabs, it comes from there as well. So as a team, as one island, we have um, meetings all the time. We always communicate with each other regarding medical missions and other cases. So it's not just limited to Bantayan. We're also helping the other two municipalities. So... If we get the new tools project back here, we're willing to share um, the case finding with the other two municipalities, just like what we did last year. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot to, for sharing that, Dr. Samantha. And let us hope that this gets uh, not only resumed, but also scaled up because this is exactly what we need if we are to NTV. So thanks a lot for sharing that. Dr. Samantha, what was the response of the ministers and the other officials? Actually, our mayor was very excited about this and very supportive. And he didn't realize how much of an impact it had. But when it comes to health, he's my number one supporter. And I couldn't have done all these projects without his backing. Um, our mayor always wanted to go to medical school as a college student. But unfortunately, his father died young. So he had to take up the family business in poultry and in their um, dried fish business. So he couldn't pursue his dream of going to medical school. So a way of him supporting our projects is by giving his full financing and support. So I'm just so thankful that he and also our, um, they're called concejals or the, or the municipal councillors. Very, very supportive and num number one fans of healthcare. And I think that's why Bantayan, uh, we were awarded as one of the top five uh, municipalities in local health systems in Central Visayas, which is our region. Because we want to um, instill universal healthcare, meaning making healthcare free, accessible, and efficient for, for all our um, citizens here. So good support um in terms of other mayors maybe a lot of other mayors from other places feel a bit competitive which is a good thing <laughs> so maybe they also want to scale up um what they're doing because of the projects that we have here thank you so much for sharing that and so, so uh, my my regards and salutes to the mayor and the uh, and the municipal uh, councillor if i got that right let's shine a spotlight if you can uh, please share their names with us and our deepest respect yeah, so our mayor is Mayor Arthur E. Despi, and our vice mayor is Vice Mayor Antonio Montemar. Um, not only them, but we also have our city councillors, such as our city, our municipal councillor on health, Dr. Apollo Sessa, who's a licensed dentist. He's so very supportive of creating ordinances and laws that support health and that instill um, good welfare to the people here. So shout outs to them. Not only them, but also our barangay officials. Barangays are the smaller townships, and I'm so thankful for all the captains of these barangays because they are very, very supportive with any sort of health project that we have. We haven't seen any barangay that was against us. They're full force for us. So thank you so much to those captains as well. 
and our thanks and salutes to you too. So Dr. Samantha, quickly, uh, one question, please uh, uh, respond to this, that, you know, um, not only in Philippines, even in India, many, uh, many youngsters perhaps have that American dream and uh, you were you were you were raised there, and I'm just imagining like uh, what inspired you, motivated you, what what what's the driving force within you that brought you back to Philippines, but also to uh, you know take up such a huge mantle and really making a difference. Thank you. Yeah, so I actually moved back to the Philippines for med school. It was more of a financial decision because, as you know, doing medical school in the United States will cost you. Um, hundred thousand to four hundred thousand dollars. At the time, I didn't want to be in financial debt because I graduated university during the height of the American recession. So I graduated college in two thousand nine, which was the year after the recession. So I was thinking there's a better way to do medical school without being financially in debt or stuck. So I started looking at medical schools in the Philippines, and I found that their curriculum was all actually pretty nice. We have also Indian classmates in our university, so hello to them as well. So um, yeah, so I saw it was more of a financial, um, uh, less of a financial risk to go to medical school here, as well as start to embrace more of my roots by learning more about um, my culture and speaking the language more. So I decided to move back here um, back then for med school. And I don't regret that decision at all because it pushed me to the field that I am in today. It's actually a bit of an accident how I ended up in Bantayan. I was just here on vacation and it so happened the time I passed the board exam. Um, I also talked to the owner of the resort who happened to work also in our municipality. And so I asked her if there was a job opening for a doctor because I wanted to moonlight before I went back to the U.S. and pursue other things. And she said, yeah, um, how long are you going to be here? I said six months. And now almost two years later, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, it's because I love the people. To be honest, the reason I stayed was the people are very genuine. I'm getting kind of teary-eyed. Uh, genuine. And also, I want to help promote the healthcare and well-being of this community. So that's why I stayed in the hopefully I can stay for many more years to come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All all power to you. You know, you are a light and you will shine light wherever you go. So thanks a lot for for doing that, Dr. Samantha. It really needs a lot of inner conviction and the courage to do what you are doing. And I'm just I'm personally so inspired. And uh, and I do hope that many others will. So uh, Dr. Samantha, as you know, the world leaders will be meeting at the UN high level meeting on TB, uh, which will begin in the next two, two weeks or so. So uh, just wanted to know, you are a leader on the ground, you know, making a huge difference in the fight against TB. Uh, so uh, what is your call? What is your message? Uh, to those world leaders who will convene uh, in uh, about two weeks? My message is to fully support technology and new tools for case detection and for active management of tuberculosis because you have willing healthcare workers such as me and my team on the field who are willing to promote these tools um, for the eradication of TB because I unfortunately I don't want to see another person die of TB. Just yesterday or two days ago, we had a patient living with HIV who also had tuberculosis pass away at the age of 24. And I don't want this happening anymore because I want the people here to be resilient and to be successful in whatever that they do. But unfortunately, with these diseases of poverty, um, a lot of people don't seek help because of the stigma. And because um, the diagnostic tools are such a uh, far-flung reach for them. So I hope that by bringing point-of-care testing to their doorstep, we can help eradicate tuberculosis one country at a time or one barangay at a time. So that's my message for them. Totally. We'll repeat that one barangay at a time. So thanks a lot, Dr. Samantha. Um, it, this is such a huge inspiration to be on a Saturday morning. You gave me a lot of hope today and I'm so inspired personally. So thanks a lot again. Friends, we were listening to Dr. Samantha Tinse. She's a municipal health officer in Bantayan uh, municipality in Cebu in Philippines. So um, again, Dr. Samantha, I'm uh, echoing that, you know, a step-by-step, brick-by-brick, block-by-block, 
barangay by barangay, we will be able to NTP. That's the only way. And with leaders and heroes like you on the ground, this gives me hope that this one day will happen very soon. You will go for active case finding and let us hope uh, and pray yes. that you will have zero cases uh, in those barangay. That is so important to make uh, make it happen. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Sarva. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you so much, Bobby. And I hope this reaches out to the people that we're reaching out to. Thank you so much. Madamo nga salamat. And hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.